Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive. I've been thinking, you know, I've been doing this for a long time now. That is the Tacoma channel, the YouTube thing. And I get a lot of comments on the channel about the Toyota Tacoma, a lot of negative comments. So I got to thinking, why do people buy the Toyota Tacoma who don't like it? Just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So we're gonna run through the, the most, the most popular complaints that I receive. And then I'm gonna tell you why people do buy the Toyota Tacoma that say they don't like it. Number one, it's sluggish. It has no power. It's a dog. And I agree, the stock Toyota Tacoma, it is a dog. It has no power. Although that can be remedied. Pedal Commander, by the way, there's a link down below. If you want to save a little money and check it out, click that link. But you throw the Pedal Commander on there, gets rid of the lag, and that's really the biggest problem, and it actually becomes a fun truck to drive. Next up, uncomfortable seats. What? That I just don't understand, except for the pre-10-way power adjustable seats with lumbar. I can understand for those that have the late model Tacomas, the seats were not great. It really wasn't the comfort of them though. It was more the seating angle. You know, they kind of sat like this. You were driving like this. I understand that I actually fixed mine. I put some spacers in the back to kind of level them out a little bit. But the people that have bought the new ones, and I'm getting comments about those that have the adjustable seats, the power seats. There's 10 different ways to change those things. I don't know how you could be uncomfortable with the 10-way power adjustable seats, but people say they don't like them. Number three, no headroom. Well, this is all dependent, I suppose. You know, if you're my height, there's plenty of headroom. It's not really an issue. Now, if you're over, I'd say about six foot two or so in height, yeah, you're probably a lot longer in the upper body than the lower body, yeah, you're probably a lot longer in the upper body and obviously your head's going to be closer to the roof. I can understand that. But my big problem is, as it is with all of these, didn't you drive the truck before you bought it? I mean, certainly when you got in it, your head wasn't shrunken down or something. And then all of a sudden after you bought it, you stretched out. And now you realize there's no headroom in there for you. Test drive the truck if you didn't before you bought it on your next one. I don't get that. Next up, horrible fuel economy. Well, that's true, that's a given. And the excuse always is, well, it's a truck. And in this case, I have to agree. It is a truck. They just don't get great gas mileage, at least not until recently. Now, we've got these electrics and hybrids and all these things coming out. So they're doing better. But the Toyota Tacoma of old and current still does not get great fuel economy. Now, there are some things you can do about that. Number one, don't change anything about it. Don't put bigger, heavier wheels and tires and racks and all kinds of stuff on it to weigh it down and then complain when you don't get good fuel economy. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but you should have known. It's another one of those things. It's printed right on the sticker, the Maroni. It says what it gets. Don't expect it's going to get better. Heck, these days, you can't even expect it's going to get what it says, maybe a mile or two less, because they test these trucks to come up with these fuel numbers, fuel economy numbers, in perfect conditions. We don't live in perfect conditions. At least I don't. Next up, the plastic too small bed. Again, this is another thing that you should have known before you bought it, right? I mean, did you look at the truck? It has a short bed. It's, now you can get a long, long bed version if you can find one, but it does have a shorter bed and it is composite plastic. Now I realize there's a lot of people out there. I was one of them when I got my first Tacoma that didn't realize it was a plastic bed. I thought it was some sort of a liner. So I'll excuse that. But the size of the bed, it is what it is. It's not a full size truck. And if you're looking to do full size truck things, I would ask, why did you buy a small truck, a mid-sized truck really these days? Because they're not gonna do full-size truck things. It's not a full-size truck, right? Next up, number six, low towing and hauling capacity. It's a mid-sized truck. It's not going to be able to tow a 40-foot motorhome that weighs 15,000 or more pounds. 
But again, something you should have known when you bought it. If you're looking to haul a travel trailer around, you really need a full-size truck, maybe even a dually, maybe even an HD, I don't know, something big. So now, why? Why do these people buy the trucks then? I'm gonna assume, maybe it's a leap, that most people were aware of these things before they got them. And they went ahead and they put down that cash anyway. Number one, reliability. What truck out there is more reliable than the Toyota Tacoma that has a history of reliability? I think when a lot of people go shopping, as we all do, you typically don't go out and look for a truck or any vehicle and buy the one that has the worst reputation for reliability. Unless, of course, they've got it priced really low and then there's a warranty and you're kind of trading off on that, right? But most of us, reliability makes a difference and Toyota has that reputation. I think that's the number one reason why. Number two, quality. They have a great reputation for quality. You get a Toyota Tacoma and three days later, you don't have to take it to the shop to have everything fixed on it. I've had vehicles in the past that were like that. You get them home, a check engine light pops on. You know, my first Jeep Gladiator was like that. Brand new, got it home about maybe a month or a couple of weeks, whatever later, the check engine light came on. It's because of their horrible stop-start system and the auxiliary battery. I'm not gonna get into all of that. And I hope Toyota doesn't do that with the redesign, the 2024 that's coming, but I've heard they are. I've heard it's gonna be in it. I just hope that they give us a button we can push that permanently disables it if we, as the owner of the truck, decide to do that. Number three, it's the best looking truck on the road. Again, I think when you start looking for vehicles, typically you're looking for something that appeals to you, something that you have an attraction to. And you certainly do with the Toyota Tacoma. I've said this many times in my opinion and many others, it is the best looking mid-sized truck on the road. Maybe the best looking truck period on the road. The Ram, yeah, it's right up there with it. The new Ram is, is pretty nice and so is the new Silverado, I think. And I think a lot of, of others are catching up with the Tacoma. They're copying them because they do have the best looking, most appealing truck out there. And I think that's what first attracts a lot of people to the truck. And then you start to look at reliability and quality and you're sold. So you ignore these other things and you go ahead and pick up a Toyota Tacoma, even though it may not do the things that you want it to do, but you should have known that before you laid out the cash. Anyway, I just wanted to get on here and talk about that a little bit. You know, why do people buy the Toyota Tacoma that now, after they have it, and not very long, claim they just don't like it? I don't know. Are you one of those? Leave a comment. Let me know. Also, real quick, I do have two additional channels, Mod Driven, all about the Honda Civic, and Rob Motive JT, all about that Jeep Gladiator. Check them out, and if you're interested, why wouldn't you subscribe? And while you're at it, smash the subscribe button here too. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.